clerk and we did not cross that community blockade. It didn't end there. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt sent a letter to Harry Bridges. Harry was one of the founders of ILWU at the time. During the 1934 strike, he was the rank and file leader. President Roosevelt said that we should stay out of matters involving U.S. foreign policy. <laughs> Harry said that it was our right as workers to do so. He also said that he realized that that scrap iron that was destined for Japan could be used against our soldiers. And at that time, we were not a part of World War II. That was before the attack on Pearl Harbor. <coughs> was right. That's one of the main reasons why the U.S. government, on four separate occasions, tried to have Harry Bridges deported. He understood the relationship between black and white workers. Because during 1934, black workers in the community had the opportunity to work as scabs. Because the racism in the union was so overwhelming that there were not significant numbers of black people in that Bridges understood that in order to win that strike, they had to appeal to the black community long before there was any affirmative action. Bridges understood the relationship between all workers and how discrimination was a tool of the bosses. We were not going to cross that community blockade at SSA, August 16, 2014. That was not going to happen. And the reason why it was not going to happen is because of one of the issues and one of the demands of the 10 guiding principles of the IOW. We will treat all picket lines as if it were our own. Yeah. In 1934, two strikers were shot in the back by the cops. That day has been memorialized to be Bloody Thursday. We commemorate that day every July 5th by shutting down all 29 ports on the West Coast for 24 hours. We understand the relationship between capital and its goons and thugs that carry out its policy, police, National Guard. Private investing, private firms back in the day, it was the Petersons. Vigilantes, Ku Klux Klansmen. These were all the forces that were arrayed against the workers in 1934 with that I've been a part of some very important struggles in my lifetime. Starting when I was a student at San Francisco State, being part of the leadership for the longest student strike in American history that resulted in the African American Studies and Black Studies Department and the School of Ethnic Studies. I got two minutes. I got a 30 minute speech. So it's important that some of this information be laid out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let me be very clear about something. The ILWU is under attack right now. You may have read about it in the newspapers or seen videos. Don't think that actions like this are not noted by the power structure. We had this, the um, Israeli consulate to approach the IOWU. In 2010, when we shut down for 24 hours, 
They wanted to have a meeting with our executive board to let us know the errors of our way. <laughs> the Zen line was stopped in Long Beach, Los Angeles. It was stopped in Seattle. Efforts to stop it in Tampa, Florida. This was a movement that was very successful. And it was successful because workers at the point of production exercised its power. I'm going to wrap it up with this. The ILWU Local 10 has been with you, has been with the community around any number of issues. Oscar Grant, police murder brutality. Well now, we need your support because a billionaire by the name of John Fisher wants to privatize our portable. They want to build a 34,000 seat baseball park, 3,000 condominiums, a 400 room hotel, 1.2 million square feet of retail space at the third busiest port on the West Coast. The same workers who stood in support of the Palestinian brothers and sisters, which they should. But solidarity is not an empty slogan, brothers and sisters and comrades. Solidarity means that you give something up. ILWU local 10 members don't make any money from that exemption, but that's fine. Because we understand the importance of taking action that is important to the struggle. But I say this to you. When we call on you to stop this attack on longshore workers, yeah. could you imagine if all along where we had that wonderful Community blockade on August the 16th is now all condominiums. When the Port of Oakland now becomes nothing more than a port of last resort, so that no more political and economic action taken at the point of production can occur, we're going to need you. Thank you for your attention. Boycott, sanction, and divestment movement is very, very critical to our movement, but it means that people have to take a stand, and injury one is an injury to all. Thank you.